Hey, you guys. How's everybody doing this evening? Once again, we're here to do it. We're here to lay it all out there, my friend. We're here to go through the scriptures, searching the scriptures day and night to see if these things be true. We want to be like the noble Bereans. So if they come by here and so I'm going to make sure I keep shouting from the rooftops. That way you might hear. So um, anyway, uh, there's a giant misconception in the world. There's a lot of them, I'll just tell you. We're living in the world built off of lies right here. And the devil is a liar. He runs this world. He's the father of lies. He likes to lie to you. And uh, we need to let the scriptures, the word, be our rock upon which our faith is built. So you need to let scripture define scripture and you need to make sure that this is the foundation you're building your house off of. Other, otherwise, great was the fall of that house. So tonight I like to get into the scriptures here. Uh, um, you know, I hear it all the time. I mean, I hear it so much. I mean, it gives me a splitting headache. OK, I, I'm just overhearing it. All right? But uh, you hear it all the time. You're not saved by your works. You're not saved by your works. You're not saved by your works. It's over with. Jesus died for us. We don't have to do nothing no more. We don't have to follow the lamb where he goes. According to scripture, you do, because every man going to be judged according to his works. According to what? His works. You are saved by grace. You are. Let's talk about it. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For Let's keep reading. Don't stop there. For we are his workmanship created in Yahushua HaMashiach unto good works, mm, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. So, for by grace are ye saved through faith, not any, not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Yahushua Messiah, unto good works. It's not your works. You can't earn your way to heaven. If you think you're going to earn your way to heaven, you fell from grace. But if you think you're going to get to heaven without um, having the desire to be obedient, to have a heart that's set right, that's truly spiritually circumcised, then you fell from the truth. All right? And, and, and that's just what Scripture tells us time and time and time and time again. So, uh, and, and they'll say, I'm saved by grace. I'm saved by the favor of the Lord. You, you've, you perverted the words of the living God, Yahuwah. All right? If you look at the root word, the Greek word that's used in the original writings, uh, you're going to find out grace is the divine influence in your heart that makes you walk in a way that molds and sculpts you into a peculiar people set apart, zealous of good works. Not the, that ain't thus saith Chad, that's thus saith Yahuwah. Let's read it right now. Titus 2, 11 through 15. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Yahushua. The great God and our Savior, Yahushua. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from lawlessness, iniquity, lawlessness. We don't have to do that. We don't have to keep the Sabbath. We don't have to keep the dietary laws, Right? We don't have to do nothing. We just have to believe in our heart. Guys, I'm telling you, if you're building a house off a of seminary, Bible college, and theology class, great was to follow that house. At times at hand, take heed, let no man deceive you. Little children, let no man deceive you. For he that doeth righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. But once again, the appearing of the great God and our Savior, Yahushua Mashiach, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from lawlessness and purify himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. 
These things speak, exhort, and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. That's the truth of the word of God. All right? He, he came to redeem us from all lawlessness, right? And, and purify himself a peculiar people that was zealous of good works. Not your works. It's his works. All right? He says, for uh, 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 hereby know that we know him if we keep his commandments. For those that say they know him and keep not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him, right? If you have the spirit of grace, it's going to teach you to walk in this way, to follow the lamb wherever he goes, to pick up your rod and staff of authority, right? Rebuking the fable sharply, right? Let no man despise thee. So there it is. You are saved by grace, but grace is the conviction in your heart to be obedient. And if you trample overfoot the spirit of grace, he's going to take that free gift from you. But if you're true to that spirit of grace, he's going to give you the second comforter, the spirit of truth. And when the spirit of truth comes, he's going to guide you to all truths. But let's keep it going here. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. All scripture is breathed out by Yahuwah and profitable for teaching and reproof for correction and training in righteousness, that every man of Yah may be complete, equipped for every good work. <laughs> There's that good work again, all right? There it is again, you guys, all right? That's what it is. All scripture is breathed out by you and profitable for teaching and reproof. What does grace do? It teaches you. Grace is going to convict you to get in his words and to search him out. Because if you search, you will find. If you knock, he will answer. If you ask, it shall be given unto you. But if you ain't searching, you ain't finding. If you ain't knocking, he ain't answering. If you don't ask, it ain't going to be given unto you. Right? You're just going to say, oh, I don't have to do nothing. I'm saved by his grace. Man, there's so many people are going to die on that hill. They're going to die by the sword that's coming. And that's what I'm trying to do is warn you by blowing the shofar that the sword's coming. He said, I come to earth not to bring peace. No, I come to bring a sword. He said, he come to turn everyone into your household, into your enemy. And the reason for that is a vast majority of people are going to be carnal and they're going to walk as men. And those that are spiritual, well, they're going to hate you for his namesake right? It says that the natural man receiveth not the Spirit of God, for he is spiritually discerned in his foolishness unto him. But it also goes on to say that uh, uh, if any man seemeth to be wise, let him be a fool, because the wisdom of this world is foolishness unto God. It's foolishness unto Yah. All this stuff, man. Anyway, let's keep it going right here. Jeremiah 4, 22, for my people are foolish. They have not known me. They are silly children. They have no understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good. They have no knowledge. Jeremiah 4, 22, right there. Uh, he said, my people are foolish. They have not known me. And, and, and what does he say uh, to the people that come to him in the end, they say, Lord, Lord, have I not cast out devils in your name? Have I not performed great miracles in your name? Uh, and, and then he said, and I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work lawlessness. See, he said, he said uh, 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 and I will profess unto you, I never knew you. Right? He don't know you. He said, uh, my people are foolish. They have not known me. They're silly children. They have no understanding. They're wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge, right? They don't know him because, well, they're not, they're not keeping his commandments. They're not being obedient. 1 John 2, 1 through 6, and hereby do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I knoweth him, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keep his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know that we are in him. He that says he abides in him ought himself to walk even as he is walked. Yep, yeah, that's right. 
Let's move right along right here. Uh, Proverbs 3, 1 through 7. My son, forget not my law. Let thine heart keep my commandments for the length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck and write them upon the table of thy heart. Heart circumcision. You desire to be obedient to your heavenly father. You desire to follow the lamb wherever he goes. You desire to be in his likeness and his uh, his likeness and his in his image. You desire to love the things he loves and hate the things he hates. That's a heart that's set right. Right? Take no part in the fruitless deeds of darkness, but yet expose them, rebuke them, reproof them. Ephesians 5.11, I think that's what that one is. Um, Let's keep it going. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about the neck and write them upon the table of thy heart. So thou shalt find favor, right, and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in Yahuwah with all thine heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear Yahuwah, and depart from evil. Mm -hmm. If you fear him, you will depart from evil. You'll understand not to turn to the left hand nor the right, but remove your foot from evil. Right? The fear of you is the beginning of wisdom. That's what it is. There's no fear of Yahuwah and there is no wisdom in these end days. Right? Everybody's operating out of the vanity of their own imaginations. Right? Claiming to be wise, they became a fool. <laughs> and exchanged the glory of the immortal Yahuwah for the image of a mortal corruptible man. Right? They worshipped and served uh, 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 the serpent on the staff versus... The acts that Yah did, right? That that serpent on the staff, the serpent on the pole is supposed to symbolize. They forgot Yah's works and they worshipped the, uh, the serpent that was raised up on the pole. And just as the serpent was raised up on the pole, so shall the Son of Man be. And the whole world worships the Son as God Almighty. And once again, they've forgotten the Father. So, better get it right, you guys. What does it say? It says, for all vote in Romans 1... For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. But instead, uh, 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 their imaginations became vain and their hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became a fool and exchanged the glory of the immortal Yua for the image of a mortal corruptible man. Right? Worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator that's blessed forever. Amen. So, we don't want to do that. You need to... You need to get in this word and get grounded in the truth. That way you're building your house off a of rock, guys, because time's at hand. Take heed. Let no one deceive you. All these Baal priests and uh, uh, Baal prophets and uh, uh, pastors out here, uh, uh, they're just regurgitating uh, what Bible college, seminary, and theology classes filled them up with the last 1,500 years. <laughs> I'm telling you, guys, the devil's a liar. He's in the details. When men get called of Yah, they think they're called by God. What do they run to go get taught the, the word and under, get understanding? They run to the world and they get filled up like a jelly donut, right? Filled with lies and nothing but lies and deception coming out of their mouth. But Yah in the end days is going to raise up watchmen, going to raise up men, right? That's, gonna, that's going to teach his people knowledge and understanding from his heart, straight from the word of God. They're going to confound those who think themselves to be wise. They're going to be angry at a foolish nation. They're going to follow the lamb wherever he goes. They're going to be virgins not to follow with women. That's what the scripture says, right? The church got it wrong. They dropped the ball. They fell from the truth of the word of God. That's religion. It's a broad path to destruction and a narrow gate to life. Few be that find it. We're really going to have to humble ourselves to let go of all these things we love in the world so much. Right? For, for anyone that loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Right? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. For whosoever loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Right? And if you don't lose your life for his sake... Those things you love so much, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for his sakes, you'll truly find it as it is written. 
So let's keep it going right here. For we know the law, Romans 7, 14 through 16, for we know the law is spiritual, but I am of flesh, sold into the bondage of sin. What am I doing? I do not understand, or I'm not practicing what I would like to do, but I'm doing the very thing that I hate. But if I do the very thing that I do not want to do, I agree with the law. Confessing the law is good. The law is spiritual, you guys, all right? And if you're not abiding by uh, the blessing of the law, right? If you're not abiding by the blessing of the law, there's a curse and there's a blessing, all right? I just did a teaching, a couple of different ones on this right here. And you can go back to my TikTok, go back to my YouTube, and you can find those right there. And it's going to give you a better understanding of exactly what the blessing is and what the curse is. And here in the end days, when good is evil and evil is good, uh, they proclaim the blessing a curse and the curse a blessing. You can't make this stuff up, you guys. But the law is spiritual. And what law is spiritual? Uh, the, the law of liberty and life. Okay? Choose life. It's spiritual. All right, you want to be a sanctified spiritual vessel for your heavenly father to dwell in. Know ye not that you're the temple of Yah and the spirit of Yah dwells in you. So you need to sanctify this temple because your body was bought with a price by the blood of Yahushua Mashiach. Now you have to glorify Yahuwah, your heavenly father, in your body and in your spirit. And you only get the spirit if you obey. Acts 5.32. And then, of course, Romans 7.14-16 through 16 says the law is spiritual. Right? Galatians, what does he say? 5.16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. How do you walk in the Spirit? By following the Lamb wherever He goes. Right? Uh, our Messiah kept the dietary laws. Right? His disciples kept the dietary laws. The prophets kept the dietary laws. Our Messiah kept the Shabbat holy, sanctified, and set apart from the world. The, his disciples kept the Shabbat holy, set apart, and sanctified, right? Set apart from the world. The prophets kept the uh, Sabbath holy. They kept it, uh, they sanctified it, right? They kept it set apart from the world. Uh, 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 our Messiah walked out the Torah, the law of liberty and life, like a champ, without blemish, without spot, blameless, Right? His disciples, they kept the Torah. They walked out the life of law, law life and liberty uh, like champs. Uh, the the uh, prophets, they kept the Torah, the law of life and liberty. They walked it out like champs. Do you see the faith of the Bible being acted out in your own lives? Or has the whole world been deceived as it is written? Well, I mean, it's all in prophecy. Everything that, that was going to happen, he declared it through his prophets. Right? Everything, you guys. Everything. Let me read it right quick. Let's go there. Amos. Let's go to Amos 3. Seven. Surely Yahuwah will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Right? He's not going to do nothing without revealing it through his prophets first. Everything. That's how you test these spirits right here. You have to go back to the prophecies. You have to go back to the prophets. Right? If if God was incarnated in the flesh, was was if the Messiah was God reincarnated in the flesh, it would be in prophecy. That's who he was going to be. But that's not the testimony that prophecy lays out for us. No. That's not the testimony. That's the lies from the devil. If he was going to end the law, it would be in prophecy. But it's not. It's not in prophecy. No, he's going to magnify the law. He's going to refresh the Holy Covenant, turning the people back to the Father, becoming the great mediator between Yah and his children. Mediator, high priest between Yah and his children. Right? This is the truth of the Word of God. So everything he's going to reveal to his prophets before it happens. So that's how you test the spirits. It, it, you know, go back and see if these things be true in the prophets like the Nova Bereans. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 through 24. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesizings. Prove all things, hold fast to which is good, and abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray your God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless into the coming of Yahushua. 
So let's run that back one more time. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. When you despise prophecy, you quench the spirit, right? He, that's why he says, you fools, slow to heart to believe everything in which the prophets have spoken. You know, that's what he was saying. He, you, you can't, you need, to, he's the spirit of prophecy, man. If you want to know who he is, you have to find out who he is through the testimony that's left through the Torah and the prophets, okay? You need to be a witness to the testimony of who he is. You know, you have to. The dragon is wroth with the woman and goes off to make war with the remnant of her seed. It's those who keep the commandments of God and those who hold strong to the testimony of Messiah. Right? If you if your testimony is he's God in the flesh, guys, great was the fall of that house. That's not what the prophets say. That's what your religion says. Your religion says that. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesies. Prophesying. When you when you despise prophecy, it quenches your spirit. You're not walking in the spirit, you're of the flesh. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Blessing or curse. Life or death. Good or evil. The law of liberty and life. Or the law of sin and death. Okay? That's what this is going. When you see these references constantly in Scripture. I don't care if it's Paul. I don't care if it's Peter. I don't care if it's James. I don't care if it's our Messiah. I don't care who John. I don't care who it is. Uh, Samuel. Malak from Samuel to Malachi, dude. This is it. It's constantly speaking of the blessing and curse, and it's riddled in this language. So you need to, it's very important you find out the terminology. You need to let Scripture define its terms. You need to let Scripture define what life is and what death is, what good is, what evil is, what blessing is, what curse is, what righteous is, what wicked is. You have to let Scripture define this. Otherwise, you're operating out of the vanity of your own imaginations. You're going to label the blessing a curse. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesizing, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all the appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of Yahusha. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Hmm. Let's keep it going. Romans 10, 1 through 3. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them a record. They have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of Yah's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, they have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. They have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of Yahuwah. Right? How do you do that? By bowing down and serving him and, 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 and making your life a living sacrifice, following the lamb wherever he goes, picking up your staff of authority, rebuking the fable sharply, bold as a lion in the face of the fear of a world that's built off of lies. That's what it is, you guys. You're supposed to pick it up and follow him. So don't be ignorant of his righteousness and go about to establish your own righteousness. Let... Get grounded in this word right here, and he gonna um, he gonna make you holy and sanctified if you let the Spirit do it. Once again, grace is gonna teach you if you let it. You can be high minded and, and, and rebellious and prideful and all these things if you want to, but you're gonna get destroyed, right? Hate to burst your bubble, dude. Titus one sixteen. They profess that they know God in works. They deny Him being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. Hmm, that's the New Testament, guys. Titus 1, 16. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. Right? Romans 2. Let's see here. Romans 2, 5. But I want to do something real quick. Romans 2, 5. All right, let's go there. Number 5. 
But after thy hardness and impotent heart, treasurest up thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of Yahuwah, who will render every man according to his deeds, according to his works. To them by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, What's the truth according to Scripture? Psalms 119, 142. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and your law is truth. Let Scripture define Scripture, not your vain imagination. So let's keep it going right here. Okay, wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render every man according to his works. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality and eternal life, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness. According to 1 John, all unrighteousness is sin, and sin is the transgression of the law. Let Scripture define Scripture, not your vain imagination. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, life, death, blessing, curse, good, evil, law of liberty and life, law of sin and death, obedience to Yah's law, lawlessness. Man, come on, you guys. Let's get it right, dude. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also the Gentile, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good. <laughs> glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good. Glory, honor, and peace to every man that does what? Worketh good. Man, I tell you, we don't have to do no works. Yeah, man, you are brainwashed. You are possessed by demons. You need to get it out. Come out of her, my people. Let's keep it going. For there is no respect of persons with God, right? For as many have sinned without law shall also perish without the law, right? They're going to perish without the law because they sinned without the law, right? They sinned without the law of life and liberty. So by default, they chose the law of sin and death. If you don't choose the blessing, by default, you choose the curse. If you don't choose uh, 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 a righteousness, by default, you chose unrighteousness, right? And if you don't choose the law of life, liberty and life, by default, you chose the law of sin and death. So that's what that is right there. For as many have sinned without the law shall also perish without the law. And as many have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before Yahuwah, but the doers of the law shall be justified. The, not the hearers, the doers. Man, all right, lost myself right there, uh, of the law. Okay, for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts. Right? They show the work of the law written in their hearts. It says, let your light shine before men so they can see your good works and you can glorify your Father in heaven. Right? Right? The law is a light. Where's that scripture at? I don't want to get off right here, but it's it's the law once again, guys. So, which show the good work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness in their thoughts, the mean while accusing or else excusing one another. And the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Yahushua HaMashiach, according to my gospel. Man. All right, let's keep going right here, you guys. So um, you, you saw it right there. Um, but to them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, and tribulation, and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil. Right? And then glory, honor, peace to every man that worketh good. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile, for there is no respect of persons with Yahuwah. So... Let's keep it going right here. Revelations 20, 12 
through 15. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the death delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to his works. According to his works, work to do. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Mmm, man. So James 2.17, Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Mm, James 2, 18. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. All right, you're going to see my faith when I'm following the lamb wherever he goes. When I'm picking up my staff and I'm following him. Right? I'm doing what he did. Now, how much faith do you have when you're walking around doing what you want to do instead of what he did? Do you believe? Do you? If you believe, you obey, right? You can you can honor him with your lips all you want, but your heart is far from him, right? Holding strong to the traditions of men, you fully reject the commandments of God. James 2.26, For as the body without the spirit is dead, you only get the spirit if you obey. For the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Hmm. Right? Matthew 16, 27, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Right? You're going to be uh, rewarded uh, according to your works, and you're going to be condemned according to your works. So, Acts 17, 30 through 31, And at the time, in the times of this ignorance, God winked at. But now he commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day in which he shall judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. Wherefore, he has given assurance to all men that he has raised him from the dead. 1 Peter 2, 4 through 12. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that where areas you... Where, where areas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold. Glorify God in the day of visitation. Mm, so they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of uh, visitation. So it's important for us to, uh, to walk the way in which he walked, you know. And, and people are going to see your light shine before men, and you can glorify your Father in heaven. Proverbs 6.23, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. There it is. The law is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Remember? Life and death, blessing and curse, good and evil, righteous and wicked, the law of liberty and life. Oh, the law of sin and death. Obedience to Yah's laws lawlessness so for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life john 3 19 through 21 and this is the condemnation that the light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light the law is light neither cometh to the light we don't have to do that it's not for us that's for the jews he fulfilled it we don't have to do it we don't have to follow the lamb where he goes. Very evil, you guys. Come out of her, my people. But he that... Okay, so come, okay, so for everyone that doeth evil, hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved, that he doeth truth, cometh to the light, and that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. Matthew 5, 10 through 18. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy. I, I have not come to think not I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. 
Uh, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot nor one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, to all be fulfilled. Fulfilled meaning everything that was written about him in the Torah and the prophets. He's the spirit of prophecy, man. And, and before uh, uh, he came in the flesh, it was prophesied all through the Torah, the prophets from Samuel to Malachi, the Psalms and Proverbs of this righteous seed that would come forth from Abraham, that would spring forth, this righteous branch that would spring forth from David, that would come magnify the law, refresh the Holy Covenant, turning the people back to the Father, taking away the curse that was added of the sacrificial law, right? Becoming the sacrifice, the Lamb of God, atoning for our sins and our Father's Father's sins, and becoming the great mediator and high priest between Yah and his children. Mediator and high priest between Yah and his children. Not God Almighty. He come to fulfill the things that were written about him. Here it is, Luke 24, 44. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which was written in the law of Moses, right, the Torah, the law, and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. All things must be fulfilled which was written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. That's what he's talking about when he said, I think not I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I've not come to destroy, but to fulfill. To fulfill the things that were written about him, guys. That's what this is. And it's what he is. He's the spirit of prophecy, man. You're supposed to hold on to the testimony of him and be a witness of who he is from the Torah and the prophets. When Paul was preaching a uh, 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 Messiah, expounding about uh, uh, who he was, he was doing it out of the Torah and the prophets, according to Acts 28, right? That's the only scriptures they had. There was no New Testament. That's all. Everything Paul taught was from the Torah and prophets. Nothing new is under the sun. He preached the word you heard from the beginning. The word you heard from the beginning. And if you hear any other gospel preached besides the word you heard from the beginning, you twist in the scriptures to your own destruction. As it is written, we were warned about one author in the Bible, which is Paul, and how the ignorant and unstable would twist his scriptures to their own destruction. And lawless people would go in error. And you beforehand, brethren, take heed that you 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 not do this, right? Every church house out there is going to flip to Galatians and Colossians and Corinthians and uh, 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 Romans, and they're going to justify uh, their lawlessness uh, using Paul's letters as it is written. But there, it's not what Paul was saying. They're just twisting his scriptures. Paul's saying the same thing every other author in the Bible is saying. They're all saying the same thing. And when you read one author in a way that contradicts every other author in the Bible, you're twisting the scriptures to your own destruction as it is written. All right. So these are the words which I spoke to you while I was with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which was written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures, right? Isaiah eight twenty to the law and testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. But here's one John one seven. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, if we walk in the law, as he is in the law, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Yahushua Messiah, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Right. 1 John 3, 4, whosoever committed sin transgresses the law. The sin is the transgression of the law, right? So he's going to cleanse us from transgression the law. Now, we, we're, we're, if we repent, right, we turn to him, and, 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 and he's going to cleanse us from this sin. We're, going to, we're turning back to the Father. That's what repenting is. You're turning back to the Father and his covenant, right? Oh, goodness. Revelation 2, 20 through 23. Now withstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel which calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication. To teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. There's your hog at your holidays, holy days. You made the profane holy. The devil's in the detail, guys. I'm telling you. The fornication is you started worshiping your God like the other nations worshiped their God, right? After he fed you to the full, you assembled yourself together in the harlot houses and committed adultery, idolatry. That's what the harlot houses taught you. And that's who this is talking about. And I gave her, 
harlot whore mystery Babylon spaced to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he that searches the reins and hearts, and I will give every one of you according to your works. There's work to do. Uh -huh. I'm going to give every one of you according to what? According to your works. Revelation 22, 12. And behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. Here we go right here. 1 John 3, 7. Little children, let no one deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. Mm, he that doeth righteousness. Here we go, Jeremiah 17, 5 through 10. Thus saith Yahuwah, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from Yahuwah. Right? You make a flesh your arm by, you know, believing your religion instead of the word of God. All right? Let God be true, and every man a liar. Romans 3, 4. How many men? Every man. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh. Good blessing. He shall not see when good cometh. You send strong delusion. You're going to believe the line, be damned, because you chose not the love of the truth, but instead took pleasure in all your unrighteousness. For he should be like a heath in the desert, and shall not see good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, it's not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusteth in Yahuwah, and whose hope Yahuwah is, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall seeth from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, Yahuwah, search the heart, and I try the reins, and I give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings. Do you have good, good, good fruit or bad fruit, right? Are you producing the, the, the good, good figs or are you producing the evil, naughty figs as it is written? Mmm. Well, blessed is he that hears the that hears and readeth the word of this prophecy and keeps the things that are written therein. Blessed is he. So, once again, guys, you saved by grace through faith unto good works, right? That's Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For by grace, you're saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Yahushua unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And once again, let's go to this one right here. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. All scripture is breathed out by Yahuwah and profitable for teaching, for reproof, and for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of Yah be complete and equipped for every good work. Titus 2, 11 through 15. And, and I pray that God pours his grace on you. That you turn from the ways of the world. You turn back to the Father. You offer your life as a living sacrifice. And you start to pick up your staff of authority. And follow the Lamb wherever He goes. Grace will teach you to do that. Let's read it. Titus 2, 11-15. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Yusha Mashiach, to gave, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from lawlessness and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. He wants to purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. So, anyway, you guys, there it is. 
You're going to be judged according to your works. Grace is going to convict you to walk in the way, to uh, 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 to, uh, to be righteous and godly, right? And, and to be a peculiar people that's zealous of good works. So very important that uh, uh, we walk the way in which he walks. So anyway, hope you guys liked the video. Hope you got something out of it. If you did, like it, love it, share it, or put an angry face. I don't care. You guys have a blessed night. Hallelujah.